Can you talk about your view on the health of the venture industry right now? The venture industry is both quite vibrant and quite competitive. When we first called the CEO of ServiceNow, Fred Luddy, he, he was getting call from every venture firm under the sun. And so we had to go the extra mile to try to convince Fred that we were quite different and, and that we could help him to build a business. How do you pitch that and then how do you deliver on that? Well, it's not exactly a pitch. It's an understanding of business where you meet with a CEO or a founder and you talk about sales, engineering, product management, uh, and give some ideas or suggestions. And the founder quickly understands that you really can help them both operationally and from a strategic standpoint. And in those conversations, then you build trust. And by doing so, he really starts to believe that you can help him. And that's how he chooses you as an investor and as a business partner for the long term. For Sequoia as a firm, um, last year um, you had a little bit of uh, change in leadership. Can you talk about how things have changed uh, since Michael Moritz uh, made his announcement? Things have not really changed that much. We have tried to build Sequoia Capital in the same eye for the long term that we really uh, look for companies that we like to partner with. And so when, when Sequoia had begun 40 years ago, it wasn't named Valentine Ventures. It didn't have people's names on the door. We worked very hard on making sure we didn't have a single point of failure. Mike and I were the two managing partners, if you will, for the last 15, 16 years. And so with Mike, he decided to back off for health reasons and spend a lot of time with young companies. We had a backup plan in place that was built in. So nothing much has changed. If anything, we have more of Mike Moritz now in the venture business. Can you talk a little bit more about that philosophy in terms of the team concept with Sequoia, how all the partners are involved and, and how you work with entrepreneurs? We call ourselves business partners and not investors for the simple reason that we're there with them every step of the way. Whether it be a seed investments like QTube or Palo Alto Networks uh, or some of the many other type of seeds, we spend a lot of time. Or companies like Meraki where we did a Series A investment and we had to go through four generations of business plan, meeting every week until we finally hit on a business plan that worked. And of course, as you know, we sold the Moroccan company along with a founder and, and CEO for Cisco for a billion to just a few months ago. It seems like in the venture industry lately, there's been a lot of VC firms doing PR, marketing, and that type of thing. How do you think about that whole area? Well, I'm quite embarrassed by it. I, I, I want to start by saying that. Because our business is all about helping someone, a founder, a CEO, a team building a great business. It is not about seeing our names in the press. I, I am not quite sure why firms go and do that, why venture firms go do that. It might be for ego reasons, it, may, it might be because they think they're going to get more deal flow. But the founders and the management teams do 95% of the work. They're the ones that should be in the limelight. Furthermore, if you put a founder and a company in the limelight, they're more likely to get customers. I notice that a number of your companies and some of your partners, you, your model is to do the Series A investment and stay on through the IPO, if possible, longer on the board. Our sweet spot is staying through the IPO and two or three years after the IPO while making sure we distribute our shares during very healthy times. We're really, really strong, you know, in helping create a business through maybe three, four, five hundred million dollar run rate. At some point, the company gets so large that we think they should have a much more professional board so made up of people whose strength is to lead, is, is to be on the board of those kinds of companies. You were talking about your office space. Can you talk about your, your firm's philosophy on that? I think the office space really flows down from our culture and our beliefs. We are a very flat organization. Here we call everybody partners. So if we hire a young investor, and I'm one of the older people, I'll introduce him or her as a partner. We all used to have great offices. Uh, and about a year ago, what we decided to do is move into open space with stand-up desks. We are sitting by themes. So we'll have a mobile theme, an internet theme, an infrastructure theme. So we can have a lot of communications. No fancy art at Sequoia Capital. The only art is, uh, is a tchotchke from one of our companies or a poster from one of our companies. All right. How do you stay, you know, on top, you know, hungry and, and, and like you're saying, in such a competitive industry? I think Sequoia looks for people like I am. 
people from humble backgrounds, as I said, some of us are immigrants, who something happened in our lives early on, maybe our system was shocked, and we have this unbelievable need to stay on top and to succeed. It is a drive that will never end until I die. And many, many of the people we hire, if not all the people we hire, seem to have that same drive.